Stop, 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 stop. It just wouldn't be right to be showing off this somewhat beautiful final leg of the adventure back to our safe haven in Southampton to ride out the next wave of the COVID lockdown storm without also talking about what happened the day before because this was a two-part journey this next leg of the adventure and the first leg was considerably less glamorous and at one point at one point it was fair to say a little bit dangerous and certainly a little bit embarrassing so we're going to need to rewind it a little bit here We are planning the next leg of our journey and we have a very tiny window of opportunity in between all these low pressure systems which are beating us at the moment. Currently we're in Port Harbour, we're going to be coming out of Port Harbour and we're going to be heading across the bay up to Yarmouth via the Needles Channel and we have a couple that are coming along for the ride actually, not in our boat, they have their own boat but they're making the same journey coincidentally and they were speaking to Carly last night and uh, so we decided we'll head off together. We have obviously consulted the master of UK sailing, Mr. Tom Cunliffe, and uh, again, the obviously almanac, the charts. As you see, this is where we are now. We're actually at the top part of Pool Harbour. We're going to be coming out just as the tide turns, and then the tide's going to be turning and it's going to be heading east with us all the way up to the Needles Channel. And again, we should have fair tide and wind heading up the channel, so it shouldn't be too bumpy. And then we're going to stop here in Yarmouth where we're going to tuck up for the night. I have an engine check procedure which I go through every time we go anywhere. Oil, water, belt tension, coolant, um, you know, the, the intake, is there anything clogged? And uh, it's just a fairly basic check. You know, I'm, I don't know if there's anything more intricate anyone would go into. Um, but now the engine checks for us, obviously the fuel system as well. I used to just check the water separator bowl just again see if there was anything in there. Um, but now I check the water separator bowl, which I've done, that seemed okay. But I also stick a pipe on the uh, on a cock on the bottom of the drain and of the tank, sorry, and I drain off whatever's on the bottom of the tank every trip, which almost certainly is costing us a decent amount um, in wasted fuel. Into the little utility space. Uh, and again, I think I've shown you this before, but just down here, where I'm pointing, is the the cock at the bottom of the stainless tank, which is which is all the way in here. And um, and yeah, so basically, I just I put a little bowl here again, as we did with Mark when he came to visit. And we've got this little pipe here, and I'm going to empty off some fuel into there, which is tricky to do and film. So you'll just have to take my word for this bit, and I'll show you what comes out. You can see here, settling at the bottom is all that horrible brown gunk which sits at the bottom of the tanks. And so, as I say, our focus this winter is going to be making sure that never happens again. And uh, it's not going to be as straightforward as just cleaning the tanks, unfortunately, because the tanks are firmly buried deep inside the boat and the boat seems built around them but it doesn't matter we're gonna to have to figure out something that makes them spotless <sighs> meanwhile i'm gonna get back to doing this so. <laughs> okay. so. it's now the moment of our departure the buccaneer crew have departed the boat they're gonna help us with our lines thankfully and we're off to uh hopefully catch the tide <sighs> aha all right see you later skipper So travels. It will be, will be. And don't forget to let us know when that spearfishing trip yeah, it's is on. Happen. Don't worry. I will probably First. be of no use whatsoever again, but I'll be there in spirit. Nicely done, Carly. Bloody hate this You've done it. You've done it. You've nailed it. Good. Right, guess See? I told you, you've got this. So we have, we've just got underway, hoisted the mainsail, and we are buddy boating with a boat, a naiad, uh, who goes by the Intrepid Bear, did you say? Intrepid Bear. Intrepid Bear, they're just in front of us. I would show you, but it's now also hooning it down with rain, and this camera's not waterproof, <laughs> sadly. Hank has wasted no time at all. <laughs> to get in, uh, in... Okay, down. Fancy a blanket, mate? He's got his waterproofs on, he has his new 
uh, Herter life jacket. He is always strapped in as well. He's tethered in and he looks like he's falling asleep slowly. Yes. Fingers crossed. Don't, you can say it. <laughs> Fingers crossed everything goes wrong. <laughs> Fingers crossed the engine blows up. Don't there you go. I'm anti jinxing us. Stop it. I'm anti jinxing us. Don't, just don't even say the words. I don't know. I hope, hopefully, we'll have. Um, a smooth sailing trip. It'll be uneventful. But then again, if it's uneventful, no one's going to watch it if it's uneventful, is it? They'll be like, oh, look, there's a couple that just sailed to Yarmouth. No, because they're meant to be trying to sell the dream of sailing the UK. I mean, it's shocking it down with you're rain right now. Just Probably shouldn't even film this trip. It's, it's grey, it's cold, uh, it's raining, and I don't know what dream we're selling when. A lot of people will be sat in an office, and I'm sure they'll trade places. Yeah, probably. You know, so I, heard, I, I heard somebody once say that a bad day out at sea is better than a good day in the office. And I said, that's not true. No. Kodoa, Kodoa, Intrepid Bear, Intrepid Bear, Channel 167. Intrepid Bear, this is Kodoa on Channel 06. Over. Intrepid Bear, Kodoa, good afternoon to you guys. Um, everything all right on board? How was the engine this morning? Intrepid Bear, the engine so far, so good, is doing uh, everything that we hoped you would. Over. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I'm sure you've gathered that sass right in front of you, and um, we'll see you out there when we get across. Shepherd Bear, look forward to it. Co captain. So, no sooner had we broken out the cameras to start capturing the moment of the next sail that we had embarked on than the weather really started to deteriorate. The rain was howling down, the winds were picking up. The winds were picking up to much higher levels than were originally forecast. And so we basically just hunkered down and got on with it. Although as we approached the Needles Channel, as we could see the Channel Marker Boys were in sight, the sea state that we were just about to enter was radically different to what we had just come across the bay in. And I mention this for some context, because I just grabbed a GoPro, threw it on my head, hit the play button, just at the same sort of moment as we were caught off guard, as we came round that first marker buoy, we misjudged a wave, and rather than coming straight down the wave, the boat started to turn at sort of 45 degree angle to the wave as the water broke. That changed our position to the wind, we accidentally jibed, narrowly ducked out of the way of that boom, and it was, we, well, let's be honest, we, we basically just kind of lost control of the boat. And we managed to get it all together, we had a preventer rigged up from the last video, from the last journey that we did, but it wasn't it wasn't on tight. It was just sort of loosely rigged up, ready for if we needed it again. And it was just, as I say, loosely tied off on a cleat. It wasn't tight or taut. So the boom, as it swung across, the preventer eventually came tight and then didn't go all the way around, but we hadn't set it up. We'd only just changed our position relative to the wind as we rounded this marker boy. And this is footage, this is footage that would have been all too easy to just delete from the record. That's the beauty of being a video editor, I suppose. You can portray anything that you want. You're in complete control, but to not include this footage, to me, would very much defeat the point of this vlog. You know, two regular house-dwelling landlubbers embark on this life aboard a sailing boat, and how do we move our new home around via the sails? Uh, does it all go swimmingly, or are there incidents and lessons to be learned? And I feel like we have a phenomenal privilege in that we now have an audience of people, many of which have forgotten more about sailing than we'll ever know. And so we can tap into your collective knowledge. And sometimes that means bearing all, even embarrassing moments like this. We are just entering the Needles Channel. Oh, it's okay, it's okay, Carly, it's okay. The preventer did a good job. Oh. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay, all good. All good, right, we're gonna wind this in. Right, if you can tail that, please. Again, just keep an eye on the waves. And this here, I'm gonna wind the head sail in. Well, I'm going to let them. I'm going to let the main out more, and then I'm going to tighten up the preventer so we've got something driving us forward, and hopefully, will help keep us stable. I think that makes sense. It's a bit spicy in here. Oh, it's 
beyond spicy. Hank, you're a legend, you're just chilling, good man. Just, yeah, whatever. Carly doing a great job. Doing good, you're doing really well. So as well as that video clip you just saw there, generally speaking, upon reflection, uh, I think that sailing downwind has not necessarily been our, our strongest point in as much as we didn't have a spinnaker pole or, or, or a whisker pole or any means of um, opening our sails out in a wing on wing uh, scenario to really make the most of the wind when it's behind us. And in this instance here, when we had over 30 knots of wind behind us and some bouncy seas, the question I suppose I would have is, is optimal ways to set up to sail in that situation, in that moment, when we weren't really sort of having too much control over the head sail. It seemed that just having one sail up and having that uh, prevented out and rigged up in a way that we could still drive forward made sense. If it was only the head sail we used, in my mind, all the force would be pushing too much down on the front of the boat. Um, potentially maybe winding the head sail in and uh, launching the stay sail and having a reefed main and a stay sail would probably be a good way to get through that. Or do you prefer the idea of perhaps like a whisker pole and a, a couple of reefed sails and still continuing in a wing on wing fashion in that sort of scenario? Um, this is really where the value comes from. As I say, the privilege in being able to tap into your collective sailing brains and uh, and learning, learning from it. So please feel free to share your wisdom and your knowledge and your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, let's crack on. We're on the final leg of the journey back home and we're just in Yarmouth at the moment and uh, the day isn't going to be able to get started without some sort of pickle to try and figure our way out of. And this one is getting off this particular pontoon that we, we stayed the night on last night. Now there's a few problems which I'm going to run you through now. The first one is we have the wind kind of blowing us onto the pontoon and towards the slipway in front of us. And we're in a boat that doesn't particularly like going backwards at the best of times. But going backwards in this particular situation is tricky because the pontoon as you go back turns at a 45 degree angle which then is going to make it very difficult to maneuver the boat. Another issue we have is this slipway that I'm on right now is running down alongside Kadoa and it's also low tide so there's not going to be a huge amount of depth very very close to the boat so swinging around is not really going to give us an awful lot of wiggle room. The second problem is we don't have any sort of bow thruster on the boat and we have a boat that goes backwards in any direction that she feels she wants to. She'll let you know once you start going, but it generally kicks out hard to starboard. So that's not really an option here either. So getting off this pontoon is gonna take some figuring out. And I don't think I've got the answer just yet. As I say, no bow thruster, being blown on, not a lot of wiggle room, not a lot of depth just off our port side. It's time to consult the internet. I think I've, I think I've got it. I'm gonna come from the cleat on the port side, which is away from the, uh, the mooring. And then we're gonna come around the back, over to here. All that in tight. This is all a work in progress ish. I was thinking of releasing that, slipping the back, and then just pulling us in, pulling us in, so we don't jut out too far. In my head, that's how I see it. You ready? ready. Gladiators, are you ready? guesstimating where where we need to put these. Let's release bounds. Put this one. It's only bloody working, you know? Yeah, it's still coming around. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you very much. Hi, Bob. Yeah. Oh, Let's get rid of you.
something about this ancient chart plotter that seems to engage something in the autopilot whenever we turn it on. And I haven't figured out what it is, we haven't really used it. Um, let's see if I can undo what it is. Because when we try and set the autopilot, it's trying to steer us in some, some direction that we don't really want to go. So let's have a look. Stop shouting at me. Uh, AIS options, navigation options, tracks, stop track. What do you want to do with the track? Discard track. Are you sure? Yes. Try the autopilot now. It's working now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. What have you spotted? Uh, Newton Creek, an anchorage that we're yet to try out. I heard good things about it, so yeah. we should definitely check it out at some point. All that's left to do now is sit back and enjoy the sail. <laughs> 